Welcome back to episode 4, and this time, well, this time we're going to go to a moon. In this case, Minmus, which is a little bit more complicated than the moon itself because you have to plane change, or change the inclination of your orbit. We're going to go through that. This is one of our Skylark satellites. I'm going to change this to the Skylark um, 1A. If only because I made it one quick change, and that is we've unlocked this larger relay satellite. Instead of 100 megameters, it's two gigameters. The idea with this is that we're going to be able to contact the um, the communication satellites I've been putting up that I mentioned last episode. I've put them up in orbit now. But because we're going quite far out, we want to make sure we're always able to contact them. So this should do the job. So let's get up into orbit and join me there. So here we are in orbit with the moon coming just over, above the horizon, but we're not going there today. We're going to Minmus and then on to Kerbal, the star. So we've got to uh, do a few things. There's a couple of ways to get to Minmus. So I've got it selected. You click on it and say set target and you'll see that I've got two nodes, ascending node and descending node. And right now this just means that my inclination around Kerbin is tilted just under 60 degrees with respect to the way that Minmus is tilted. And you can see that if we just line everything up. See how this tilt? Now we need to match this tilt. Or at least that's one of the ways. So we can either match it first and then we can head out there just like we did with the moon. Or we can go out there and then try to correct it around halfway out. So let's just look at those options. If we want to match it, we Let's take the ascending node, for instance, add a maneuver there. And it's, as it's the ascending node, we're going to go anti-normal. There we go. And what's the ascending node? Two degrees, a bit too far. Let's, let's just go back until those markers are halfway around. That should be roughly zero. Yep. So this is 231 meters per second. Okay. Remember that. We're not going to do it that way. What we're instead going to do is get it roughly to where we're going to need to go. Because we remember when we thrust prograde, we push the other side of the orbit outwards. So Minmus is going this way. We're going to be pushing it outwards that way. All right. But remember, we're tilted. So this isn't going to get an encounter until we do some other things. So first of all, let's just head out there roughly. That'll do. And that is going to take us 900. Now, it would have taken us 900 anyway, even if we'd done the other thing first, the uh, the plane change first. However, if instead here we say, eh, about there, let's add another maneuver. And now let's adjust the plane down. OK, so there we've got the encounter markers were a bit too high, so we're going to bring it down. Too far down, way too far down. There we go. I think, yeah, we're just at the wrong point in the orbit. So let's just bring it up a little bit. We actually want to get to the uh, the orbital line. Yeah, that's roughly right. Then go back to the first node. You can see here, you can click on it right over here, but because we've got precise maneuver, we can just go back to the other node. And now we just want to play with this a little bit to bring our orbit around, perhaps. Let's just try moving it over. There we go. So now we've got an encounter with the moon. Not something I wanted. Let's keep going around. Can we get past it? Yeah, there we are. So we can get past the moon and have an encounter. Not a very close one, mind you, but an encounter with a combination of 919, which we would have had to pay anyway, plus 28 which is just pretty good. We can get it a bit closer than that though. So if we focus the view on Minmus itself, you'll see this is where we're going to come in if we do both of those maneuvers. So if we go to node two, we can then just decrease this to down to 0 0.1 and add this and see just what effect it has. No, so maybe if we spend a little bit more, we can get a lot closer. This closer to the orbital line of Minmus. So only 44 as opposed to 240, so we can go 200 delta V. And then if we just decrease this a tiny bit, we can get really quite close. So in this case, uh, we need to get within 30 kilometers. 
Now you're never going to be able to get this, unfortunately, by doing this burn. Um, it's just really too precise to do it, do it uh, very accurately this way. But you can at least start to play with it a little bit. And get it roughly right. So what we're going to do is do both of these maneuvers. And then we're going to need to keep on going past Minmus. We're going to need to just get some science while we're passing, potentially. Or what we could also do is uh, go into an orbit around it, grab some science then, and keep on going. What it really depends is if I get out here and I don't have signal or I'm about to lose signal, depends on whether I see connections to the satellites or not, hopefully I will, then we might be okay with a flyby. Otherwise, we can go into orbit and then just wait until we've got a proper signal. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to need to wait oh, only three minutes, and it's a two minute 36 burn. So I don't have very long at all. <laughs> so let's just drop back to our vessel and then just move over to the maneuver node, which is the blue one. And I may have mentioned that I've got this mod, which lets me see the maneuver nodes and the other nodes much larger and the direction indicator with a tiny little orange thing. It just lets me be a lot more precise than this. Um, if you don't know my list of mods, I've put them in CCAN and I've linked to a CCAN file somewhere. I will put it in the description below just so you can grab them. I've also added procedural parts, which is um, a way for me to build fuel tanks, which look more realistic. So uh, we're going to want to start this burn around halfway. So one minute 15, one minute 18. So we can just go forward a little bit. And we're approaching the burn. There we go. Because this is such a long burn, I'm not going to wait. Obviously, keep this on camera. I'm going to cut, and then I'll see you once we're out to the second maneuver. Okay, so we're out here, how about halfway? There's our maneuver node. It's in an hour and 26 minutes, but it really doesn't matter when we're this far out from Kerbin. So we can do it anytime we like. So let's just move closer into Minmus. So we'll see our line come in. It's only 45 meters per second. So this is going to move really quite fast. Yeah, and then we can just make minor adjustments. And then what we can do is just get rid of it and then we can play around. So we can go, let's go prograde a little bit see which way this alters it doesn't really matter because we've got plenty of fuel so this moves us a little bit closer just by going prograde and we're going to get really quite close there we go 23 kilometers now look where this comes on the path you see we may get a good point to actually be able to communicate back to Kerbin, but we need to keep an eye on that. So the best way to do that, I think, is to time warp until we're just inside the the, the um, sphere of influence change. So we can choose here and say warp here. And you'll see we've got signal at the moment to the satellites, which is good. It's exactly what we want. We don't want to have to go back to the ground, which is the main problem with this. We've still got good 100% signal and we can transmit science which is great we need to make sure however that when we're passing Minmus <laughs> that we um, that we're continuing to be able to do that and it looks like we're going to be able to do that just fine we're going to slingshot by and we're on the right side of the uh, well, the correct side of Minmus to do that but when we leave we're not going to achieve what our mission says it says you need to get low in space above Minmus and then high in space above the sun and the first thing I'm actually going to do is just rename the vessel just to change it to a probe. We could do this later, but uh, may as well do it now. And are you not going to let me? Yeah, there is a bug in this version of Kerbal, and the easiest way to, if you get this where you can't interact with something, just say uh, Minmus Approach. And let's say, just load the save. Minmus Approach, load. For some reason, some of the yeah, the GUI doesn't like to uh, doesn't like to interact. Now we should be able to rename the vessel. There we go, and we're going to change it from a relay into a probe. So you see, the mission should light up saying vessel type probe. Okay, so we're going to go past Minmus, whatever we do, 
uh, wrong direction. <laughs> there it is. We're heading right for it. What we're going to need to do is have an escape. Now, right now, this is where the sphere of influence will change. We'll escape Minmus, but we won't escape the Kerbin system. This will be our new orbit. We're going to gather some speed. Are we on the right side of the planet for that? Yeah, we're on behind it, so that should give us some extra speed to increase our orbit size. But we want to go even further than that. So I guess there's a few ways, but let's just plan another manoeuvre at the periapsis. And let's see what we can actually do. Can we just do this at the periapsis? And what happens if we, say, add some velocity, if we burn prograde? Okay, that is an escape. And that's also an escape out of the entire Kerbin system into Kerbal space. Okay, so the green line, if we zoom all the way out, we're going to be going around the sun. In that case, let's also maybe bring this back in. And what's the limit of this? Uh, if I just bring this, how far do we need to go before that isn't actually an escape anymore? How much fuel can we save from this? Oh, there it is. Okay, so that seems pretty much 42, and we've got 891. It's not going to be a problem, I feel. However, we can line up with a maneuver node and get ready. Uh, anywhere around the periapsis should be fine. Now we can just watch the approach, and let's actually um, let's actually just refocus on the vessel. Maybe warp to here. Doesn't matter what science we actually transmit for the mission. So we can just transmit the built-in thing, which is the temperature monitor. We have to get below 30 kilometers to do it, though. So, and we're also going to have to burn as well. Now, that's a little, well, not tricky, but no, it should be fine because we're on the right side of the moon. Let's just bring ourselves in until we're close to that 30 kilometers. So 45, and you'll see we, well, we should be able to see, yeah, there we go. Lots of visibility, lots of signal, which is exactly what we want. But do remember to use this relay satellite until, maybe until you get level three tracking station on the Kerbin. At that point, you may be able to get away with the other one. But since this is very early game exploratory stuff, then we're going to need this large thing to be able to contact Kerbin. So now we're at 40, so let's just speed up a little bit again. And you'll notice the burn we're going to have to make is only six seconds. There we go. So there's camera altered. We can just hopefully grab the science from here. Let's say log temperature. Transmit. That's 12 science just for that. And it's done. And there's our mission. Our mission's done. Now we just have to collect science from the sun. <laughs> Which means uh, we've missed our node, but that doesn't matter in this case because it's close enough for Kerbals. Close enough for Rog, close enough for Kerbals. All right, have we escaped? Looks like we have. Yeah, so we're going to escape and we're going to be heading out around the sun. Now, if we want to go back, we could plot another maneuver to come back in. Uh, that's one possibility and we'd have another communication satellite. So maybe I should try that. Let's first of all uh, get ourselves right to where we escape, all the way out here. And we should hopefully keep communication because we're still not that far out, particularly not for this antenna. You'll see the signal strength is varying though, as we're having to, or we're getting occluded by different things, going through satellites, relaying, etc. Yeah, so it goes green when we contact the surface because the surface has a huge antenna and it matters more about the pairing between the, the antenna you go with and then or a relay. And in this case, the relays are not great signal strength, but the surface is. However, we're about to get to the escape point, which is just fine by me. Warp to there. And as we go out, whoops, there we go. <laughs> We've escaped. Are we in the right region? We are. So any experiment now will do. So in this case, we can 
Um, log temperature again. And now it's only six science. But hey, we've achieved it. Well, mission's complete. And we have half a million funds. We may even get more than that because of the mods I've got that uh, it gives you more for flying, uh, flying missions. So now all I need to do is maybe try and get back. <laughs> Okay, so in order to do that, then we just want to plot a maneuver wherever. Uh, it doesn't really matter at all. All we're going to see is if we can actually plot something back. So what do we actually do to do that? Well, this is where you kind of have to play around with a bit. Technically, I think you can just point back towards the planet and uh, that will do just fine. However, I guess there is a, a better way of doing this. And if you know exactly how to do that, then let me know. Um, yeah, because I don't always know. So I'm going to play around this until I've got something. Maybe I can actually return. Is that a, a Kerbin encounter? Looks like it is, you know. So we may be... That may be enough. Let's just see if that brings our encounter in. It's quite a lot of fuel, though, to actually do this. And that does tend to be the problem. Uh, if we just go to... Let's say, can we select... Kerbin and focus all right so that maneuver that we did just a little bit of retrograde has brought us into an arc and then a Kerbin escape again so we can then do another burn uh, here let's say add a maneuver and oops wrong way <laughs> I need retrograde and there's a capture so we can do that that will give us a really odd orbit but it will actually bring us into the Kerbin system again. And then we'll have a relay that is actually fairly long range. So that's 146 for uh, node 1. And node 2 is 23. We don't need to worry about waiting for that maneuver node at all. So this is just burning retrograde. Let's just put it on the retrograde marker. Burn. And in fact, we can just do that. That'll bring us a lot closer. Yeah, we don't have to go any further out. Be just fine. And then um, I can just cancel you and cancel this one. And then maybe just add another maneuver here and do a little bit more. Uh, whoops. There we go. Maybe something like this. So we get a longer range, but not quite as extreme. Let's drop it onto the maneuver node. And uh, don't put yourself in retrograde hold, otherwise you'll have problems doing this. Uh, you won't be able to align properly. There we go. And now we just have to wait until we get there, which shouldn't take us very long. Uh, warp here. So in we're coming. We've changed sphere, which is just fine. If we didn't, we'd actually go back out and into escape again, even this close. But that's okay. So I'm going to do this. This is nothing you need to see on camera. And then when you join us back again, we'll be um, we'll be on the ground. All right. So we got quite a lot of money for actually doing all of that stuff. And we're going to keep going because all that money is going to need to be used. Uh, we need to upgrade things. And I want the tracking station upgrade, mainly because it increases the power from this 50 gigameters to 250. Let's us see things like asteroids, but more importantly, it just means we can get away with um, smaller antenna much closer into Kerbin. So anything around the moon, anything around Minmus, this is going to help. We could also do the launch pad to unlimited weight. We're not going to need that just yet, I don't think. But it's not very expensive by comparison to what we now have. Similarly, we could go up to unlimited contracts, but we already have nine. <laughs> no real need for that. Same thing with uh, unlimited Eventually, we're going to need this. That will need us to, um, well, this will need us to unlock the research limit, but we're not there yet. We need lots more science, and that's coming right next. And EVAs, let's take that one, because EVAs are quite important as soon as we go to MAND. So with 1.34 million kerbucks, then we can have a look at what we can spend on. We didn't get very much science for that, because we just did temperature, just to fulfill the mission of exploration. But we can take some things. We could take flight control or air, uh, aviation. 
Aviation does have the fairings, and these are for procedural parts, if I remember rightly, so that's quite useful. However, the rest of it is just airplane parts. And then flight control is MacJeb, which will help us fly things rather than repeatedly fly things manually, which is it's all right, but it's not great uh, longer term. It gets a bit boring quickly, uh, even on the, uh, the standard rockets, especially when you have multiple missions with the same rocket, so help to automate that. So I think I'm just going to take the RCS stuff for now. Okay, and then we need to choose our next mission. Aha! So in here we have a number of things. Remember I still got the active mission, so I just do need to come back from the moon with a heat shield that's uh, <laughs> that's going to be coming in hard enough to, uh, to fulfill this mission. And some of the things that we can do, I guess, is a moon landing. That's not something I want to do just yet. I want to get lots of science to unlock more of those nodes. All the four series are really still in the... Uh, we've got manned orbit, 4.7. Manned orbit for 72 hours. And duration, seven day, 12 days. Yeah, and here's the problem. We have the USI life support. And I think what I may do... Yeah, you see, here's the, here's the problem. This permahab time, I think, is the correct one. Habitation is a bit of a problem. I don't like it. <laughs> what it basically does is say, if we're manned and we're out there, your Kerbal is going to get eventually pretty sick of being in the craft that he's in. So you can get out and get back in, and he's sort of okay. That's one timer, and I'm fine with that. You know, the need to get out into other places, not just sitting in a can on a remote planet. That's fine. However, separate to that, there is a habitation time. And that means, like, a homesickness. Eventually, the Kerbal's just going to get really, really annoyed with the fact you've abandoned him on another world and he's going to want to go home. So here's what... Uh, here's the effect of each of those things. So if you run out of habitation, you can choose what effect it has. So I, can, I think I'm just going to go for none for habitation. So they can stay out there long term. Hopefully that's what that setting does. I think it's what it does. But... Um, yeah, we'll come back to that one if necessary. I do want to make things that are self-sufficient, but at the same time, I don't want to go overboard and have them just mutiny if uh, if we all get grouchy and not do anything if we leave them on a planet, because they need, they need to colonize, okay? All right, so Mission Control wants us to do missions. However, right now we need to do science. We've got more than enough for another rocket. So in this case, it needs to be an unmanned rocket because... Um, We've not gone manned out that far yet. We've only done orbit. So in that case, we've got uh, a lunar trip coming up, or lunar either to the moon or lunar to Minmus. And that's where I've got the unlunar one for unmanned. This is a much, much larger vessel. It has the same delta V as the Skylark. Around 4K in the first stages, and around 1500. The Skylark had 1800. In the upper ones so it can actually get out to where we need to which is out near Minmus with plenty of fuel to spare or it should have it's a much much bigger vessel but we've, we're still using 1.25 meter tanks these are procedural parts tanks not uh, the not these not these ones but they are actually still expensive it's 25,000 per rocket we don't have fuel ducts so we can't do asparagus staging these are still liquid boosters so we have control but they do not gimbal so they don't give us any directional control which means if you fire these two off and leave the center one you have no directional control while it's going up in the air not really good so the middle one is reduced in thrust but it's going to start with the rest and he's gimbaled so it should give us some control further up we have uh that's not where i was going to detach it that's what, oh no, next one up. Yeah, there we go. So up here we have our trusty probe. In this case, we're going to use the Octo, which is the larger probe. It doesn't have any experiments built in, but it does have these lots of sides. <laughs> octagonal, I think. Uh, yeah, it looks octagonal. Yeah. And we've got temperature. We've got a barometer on this side. We've got four solar panels. 
and then we've got these two high gear antennas. Now, because we've got these high gear antennas and not the, the large relay, having that upgrade to the tracking station makes it so much easier to communicate with it. It does have a heat shield, and that's what I'm hoping when it comes back in. Uh, what actions have I actually put together? Uh, one is on parachute. Uh, let's actually put two as the solar panels. Uh, that's a barometer. Why is that a barometer? Oh, did I, did I not remove it? Ha! <laughs> yeah, there's one too many barometers. I put two on. There's one over there. Let's just put these back on. And we want four-way symmetry. There we go. So back to action group two, and we're going to extend the panel. Once these are extended, they don't go back in. They're not shielded, which means when this comes back into the atmosphere, if we succeed, it's going to burn off and uh, blow up, or at least the solar panels will. A couple of batteries, and that's pretty much it, apart from the science juniors, which we're going to actually just transmit. Uh, this isn't going to rec retrieve them, I suppose. Do we have the experimental... No, we don't. There is an actual box you can get that will retrieve them, uh, or recover them, I should say. But we're not going to do that yet. We're just going to transmit. That's why we've got two of them, because we don't have a, an engineer or scientist on board to be able to do anything. The scientists can reset experiments, but uh, well, this is not going to be manned. And then just a regular stage just underneath. So, with that said, I'm going to just put this back. And I'll meet you out on the launch pad, and I'm going to cut the rest of this down quite quite substantially, so we're not going to show all the same things that we just did. However, we are going to go past Mimus. I think Mimus. Yeah, it's quite quite easy to get to. Space high, space low, with both of these. So above 30k and below 30k. So the same planned route, just with a much bigger probe. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole ascent, but just while we're up there, just to demonstrate, this doesn't have any roll control. So why I have directional control, it is turning. And there's nothing I can do about it, because when I designed this, I didn't put any RCS on it. I didn't have it unlocked. But it's still going to let us get up towards orbit, just like we're seeing right now. And you'll see we're slowly running out of fuel. Those are in the booster stages. Center one is lower thrust, or at least it is for now. I'm just letting it roughly follow prograde as it's heading up. And as soon as we get higher up there, we're going to get a much more controllable rocket. And especially when we lose these booster stages. You'll see we're already above 87, 88, 90. So at this point, I'm going to lose the booster stages, I think. 106. So now we can also probably lose the fairings. And we're going to be pitching uh, over onto Apoapsis in two minutes. So I'm going to align this as we normally do with these rockets. You just really turn the center engine back on and then you get some control back because we don't have RCS to manip manipulate this yet. And then I'll get this into orbital shape and we'll come back when I've done that. And it's a bit of a scrappy orbit, 124 by 80, but uh, it gets us up there. Um, <clears throat> that was just because I pitched high too high at the start and went past Apo, but uh, it's absolutely fine. We're going to add a manoeuvre again, head roughly out there. And let's get a bit further out so we can see. I'll probably be about fine. I'm not going to worry about too much about going past it. Uh, we just want to get to a point where we're roughly out there. Then we're going to add the second manoeuvre and pull our orbit down. Okay, so we're in the right position. So let's go back to node one and then add a little bit more. We're at 884. <clears throat> As we've seen previously, we probably need to be about 900. Yeah, there we go. So we've got an intercept. We can focus. And now I can fine tune this. And what I'm going to fine tune it is we're not going to want to escape this time. We're going to want to come back in. So our orbit afterwards is going to be this red thing at the moment. So if I play with these orbits, what I should be able to do is look for a free return and we'll come back if I find one. Um, I just need to get a little bit closer. I'm not going to do this on camera because we can hint towards the end of the episode. And I want to keep it to half an hour. So let me just arrange this first and then I'll show you what I've done. 
All right, this is close enough. It will actually cause us to crash back into Kerbin if we don't make a, another change, but we're coming up on the nodes. So I don't want to leave it for too much longer. Obviously, we've got a much bigger engine than last time, or at least it's probably eight times the, uh, the size uh, in terms of its thrust, I think. So we can uh, do this quite quickly. Only 36 seconds. Just watch for the countdown nodes here. There we go. So this is moving much, much quicker. And that's pretty good. So the LV909 is a really good engine to actually both use when you're on 1.25 meter tanks, like this. So I'm going to head out there and I'll see you near Mimus. Okay, so here we are, and you may see that we're going to have a problem. We're going to pass behind Minmus, but this really weird orbit that we've got going for our previous probe lets us get communication, or should let us communicate via this one and back into Kerbin, so bouncing it around. So in this case, we're just going to leave the map view, and we've got a lovely view of Minmus coming up. We can look at the science alert, or maybe not. Okay, let's just do this manually. Uh, observe materials bay. Ah, that's why. Okay, it's going to be one of those uh, GUI bugs again. So save game. Um, Minimus Junior approach. And load the save. Minimus Junior approach. Load. I don't know which mod causes this. If you do know, please do let me know, because it'd be useful. Uh, where's the moon? There it is. So we can do material study. That's 80 science. We may not get all of it for transmitting it, however. Yeah, we're only going to get 30. That's unfortunate. But maybe we can finish that off later. Yes, that's going to make it pretty much broken. But we can also transmit some other things as well. We're okay on electric charge because we've got these four solar panels. That's still building. And how much science have we got now? Back up to 77. Okay, so we're going to need some more from close in to Minimus. Speaking of, let's get closer. Much closer. All right, let's get just below, before 30. There we go. <clears throat> and we should get lots of things popping up here any second. There we go. Material study. Transmit that as well. That's another 49 science. And atmospheric pressure scan. That's another 12 science. So what I did with these orbits is just play with it a little bit so that once we leave the sphere of influence of Mimbus, we're going to head out on this orbit again. And I'm going to be able to play with it at the apoapsis with a very, very tiny amount of thrust to get this closer. It's a half a million meters uh, at the moment, which is fine. But uh, we want something like 28 uh, kilometers, you know, 28,000 meters. So I can do that. That should be straightforward. No need to show it on camera. I'll just bring you back once we're actually about to come back to the atmosphere. And we're coming in towards the atmosphere here, so we want to do what we want. What we want to do is point roughly surface, not orbit, surface. They're quite close to each other, but surface retrograde. So we'll be coming in engine first, if you want to think of it that way. And I could fold in these antennas, but if I do, um, there's going to be a slight problem of <laughs> we'll lose all signal. This I don't put any. I don't have any of the smaller antennas on here. I don't think this has anything built in. So, yeah, I could retract one and try and save it, I guess. Uh, let's retract the one that is close to the atmosphere. And I've got the bug again. Well, that's not getting retracted. <laughs> I'm not going to reload a save. We can just see what we do here. We're about to hit the end of the atmosphere, which we just have. So let's get rid of the lower stage. And let's arm the parachute. Yeah, and these are going to quite immediately uh, burn off. That's okay. There we go. And um, probably those two. We're going to hit a plasma blackout anyway. No probe control. Even though those are still attached. 
and just our aerodynamic nature it should keep us centered over the surface retrograde but that's overheating the parachute so will that even survive hmm antenna broken off our speed is decreasing so we want to hit 32 kilometers before we hit 1880 which would be amazing and this thing should auto recover we'll see let's keep it going so watch our altitude and watch our speed is our lunar re-entry gonna be enough i really hope so because i can't think of any other way of doing this properly otherwise there's our speed it's in the right zone now you hit need 32 and there's another mission done just by coming back and now hopefully this thing is going to fire when it hits to i think i said it's around 15 kilometers so hopefully that should survive we don't really have much science on board to be honest because now the science juniors have got destroyed but we did descend all the science back so now we're just approaching so let's speed up things up a little bit with physical time warp and as long as this opens now then I'll obviously i'll shortcut this back to the ground because once it opens it takes quite a long while to oh are you gonna go yeah you are okay so there go the first parachutes and the second set will deploy when we hit six and uh, six seven hundred meters i think i put it that which is a long way to go so yeah join you back at the ground so for that we got a lot of funds for flying and we got a <laughs> Well, quite a lot of science as well, 155. We recovered everything, pretty much got all of that done. So now we can go and spend that in the research and development department. And we've got a choice. I can stick to my principles and go for the science, which is a possibility. Or we can get simple command modules. Now, the one that you probably want to get to if you're keeping habitation on, I'm going for full colonization, so maybe i'm not I'll, I'll consider it between the episodes if any of you think any particular opinion about keeping habitation on let me know i can always turn it back on we've not got to manned yet so it doesn't actually make any difference until we do get to manned but the mark one lander can is important for that because it does have hab it does add habitation time as does i think the um the various uh, cupolas or cupolas or however you want to pronounce that so this is all the manned landing pods quite important at some point um landing well the struts are useful but again each one of these take 90 so we need more science we do have the shielded solar panels which we can pull back in then those those are very nice to have and the really big relay antenna uh which is enough to get us out to interplanetary distances and then is there more science at this tier recycling modules storage tech space exploration that's the experiment storage unit i was talking about so if we wanted to recover stuff from the science juniors we could by storing it in that and then bringing that back behind the heat shield uh there's more science in that node so that is a very handy node to have advanced light control is more rcs but that is uh, mech jeb features as well aerodynamics are useful for the larger rocket sizes and then you've got really tempting ones up here you've got the heavy rocketry poodles the solid rocket motors, the larger decouplers, the small engines, these are really handy for landing on, on uh, the moon, etc. We don't have to use those two kilonewton things. These are eight times more powerful, and that's a little more than eight times more powerful. That's, that's ten times more powerful than those little tiny uh, spiders that we had. And then the larger rocket fuel tanks, which will then unlock our uh, procedural parts, I think, to two and a half meters as well. So I'm still going to be short on science. We're going to have to design a Minmus hopper at some point. And that probably means I need to, between the episodes, go and put some communication satellites around Minmus so that I have the same kind of setup as around Kerbin. So wherever I am on Minmus, wherever I'm hopping around getting science from all the different biomes, um, I'm never going to lose contact with Kerbin. Because as soon as that happens, well, we're crashing without mine, manned stuff. And it'd be in interesting, I think, to try and do that unmanned. I normally build a manned version, just because it's easier. You don't have to deal with communication satellites. But in this case, it's a hard playthrough, so we may as well go for unmanned. All right, so I'm going to leave the, the choice for this next episode. Uh, if you see this episode, I may not record the next one until this is the ones already out. So if you've got any particular opinions 
on which way you want want me to go feel free you know get in touch put the comments down i'm very tempted to get those solar panels recoverable and i'm very very tempted to get the manned pods and indeed the extra science if i was going for science which i should be i guess i should go for these and get them get more science but we'll see see you next episode and uh, feel free to give it a thumbs up if you haven't already and um yeah subscribe if you haven't thanks for watching